Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Diamondback Energy Inc., ticker symbol F-A-N-G, FANG. Not to be confused with the tech darlings, FANG is an oil and gas producer in the United States. In my opinion, FANG is likely one of the best ticker symbols out there. FANG or Diamondback Energy right now is trading for $145.24 per share. Over the past year, their stock price is up 16.5%, which is in stark contrast to a lot of the rest of the market. We're analyzing the company today to try to understand what are we missing? What could the market have possibly discovered about this business over this past year that's led to this outperformance? So over five years, however, the business is only up 10% overall. That's about 2% compounded annually. Over this time frame, the business hit its lows of only $19 per share in March of 2020. Since then, their stock price is up more than seven times. Going back a little more than 10 years to when Diamondback Energy Inc. was publicly listed, the business's stock price is performing very well. They're compounding at a rate of 22.5% annually. Keep in mind that the company also pays out dividends. So right now, Diamondback Energy is paying out a 6.2% dividend yield which is nearly four times better than that of the yield of the S&P 500 right now. So their average dividend yield over this time would be in addition to this compounded annual return. Currently, Diamondback Energy is about $13 below their 52-week high, and they're more than $40 above their 52-week low. A little under 5% of the company's shares outstanding are sold short, and Fang has a $26.5 billion market cap. For additional background about the business, Diamondback Energy is an independent oil and gas producer in the United States. The company operates exclusively in the Permian Basin. At the end of 2021, the company reported net proven reserves of 1.8 billion barrels of oil equivalent. Net production averaged around 375,000 barrels per day in 2021 at a ratio of 60% oil, 20% natural gas liquids, and 20% natural gas. Diamondback Energy Inc. was founded in 2007 and is headquartered in Midland, Texas. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist-style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Diamondback Energy based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress, and it's an opportunity to learn in public, so it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. So starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. And the second is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. So these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. And so by asking for a benchmark of 14% or higher, we can potentially potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. Diamondback Energy as an oil and natural gas company is going to be dependent on the pricing of those commodities. They're a commodity producer. It's not surprising that their return on capital numbers had declined from 2017 to 2020, especially as the price of oil and natural gas dropped over that period. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, however, the pricing of those commodities has rebounded significantly, resulting in Diamondback Energy's return on capital also rebounding pretty significantly. They produced 14.5% returns on capital in fiscal 2021, and over their last 12 months, they're earning about 27.5% returns on capital. While these previous two years have massively above average returns on capital numbers, over these last five fiscal years, when we average this out, Diamondback Energy is only earning about a 7.5% return on capital, so that's just a little bit above average, and that's well below that 14% we're looking for. So this is going to be an X to start things off here on metric number one. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. This metric is going to be all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. Over this time frame, their revenues are up massively, growing by more than six times. Their earnings are also up by more than 10 times. They had positive earnings in four of these five years. However, their earnings were significantly negative in 2020. This was due to a massive $6 billion asset write down. So to learn more about that, you can read through the company's filings. And finally, they managed to grow their free cash flows from being negative from fiscal 2017 to fiscal 2019. So they've been positive since 2020, and they are very strongly positive today. Over their last 12 months, the business has produced more than $3.2 billion worth of free cash flow. So all three of these are up very strongly. This is our first check today coming in here on metric number two. 
Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. So we're looking at the business on a per share basis. So even though their earnings are up by more than 10 times over this period, earnings are just the numerator in this earnings per share equation. So we also want to take a look at what they've done in terms of their shares outstanding, the denominator to this equation. So while they have massively grown their earnings, Diamondback Energy has also diluted shareholders pretty consistently over all five years. They've issued a lot of additional shares over this period, resulting in about an 82% shareholder dilution. Again, the business had free cash flow issues coming into the COVID-19 pandemic, and they actually made their fiscal 2020 their first year of positive free cash flows. However, they've continued to issue shares since then. This is potentially concerning because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. And so when a business dilutes existing shareholders by issuing more shares of their stock, they're decreasing your ownership percentage of the business, which is ultimately going to decrease your percentage of the business's profits overall. So while the business's earnings are up by more than enough to make up for this shareholder dilution, and in fact they've earned $24.50 per share over their last 12 months, meaning that this is a check on metric number three, this shareholder dilution is still a potential concern, especially if you want to be a long-term investor in the business. And so it would help to understand how management is approaching capital allocation and why exactly they would be justifying issuing these shares. Next up, metric number four is going to be very similar. So here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. Again, we learned that their free cash flows have swung from being negative in fiscal 2017 and negative up until 2020 to now they are quite positive. Over their last 12 months, Diamondback Energy has produced $18.25 worth of free cash flow per share, even including the shareholder dilution. This again is up very strongly, and this is another check on metric number four. To recap where we stand currently through our first four metrics, we have three checks and only one X for Diamondback Energy. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing debt. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are going to be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. And in fact, some of the biggest mistakes that well-known value investors have made over the years have been because of highly levered businesses. We want to do some work to protect ourselves here, and so we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that Diamondback Energy has produced over the last five years. Diamondback Energy took on quite a bit of debt, especially when they had negative cash flows. They ended fiscal 2021 with about $6 billion worth of net debt. And since they've been more cash flow positive over their recent years, right now the business has about $5.5 billion worth of net debt. However, over these last five fiscal years, when we sum up these free cash flows, the business's cash flow is actually negative. They've consumed about $3.7 billion worth of cash in their business, meaning that they would not be able to support these debt loads on a historical basis. So this is an X here on metric number five. It does look like things have the potential that they have changed for the business going forward if they're going to be able to be positively cash flow generative from here on out. So over their last 12 months, the business has earned $3.2 billion worth of free cash flow meaning that they'd be able to pay off all of their current net debt with only about two years worth of free cash flows. So because FANG is a commodity producer and they operate in a cyclical industry, understanding their free cash flows is really going to be understanding if their recent success can continue going forward for the business. So again, that's going to depend on the price of these commodities that they're producing relative to how much it's costing them for exploration and production. So far through five metrics though, we have three checks and two X's for Diamondback Energy. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will potentially give us a reasonable starting point for evaluation of the business and potentially give us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. So we're using their total enterprise value because it takes into account both their net debt and their market cap, and it's going to give us a perspective of the economic reality of their business that's more similar to as if Diamondback Energy were a private company. So we learned that over the past five years, the business has consumed free cash flows, meaning that on an average basis, they would have negative free cash flows. This is going to be an X here historically on metric number six. All hope is not lost, though, for the business, especially because they've been so cash flow generative over their past couple of years. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $3.2 billion worth of their last 12 months of free cash flow by their current $32.5 billion total enterprise value, that gives us just under a 10% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. 
that would be significantly above that 5% mark we're ideally looking for. So it may be interesting to dig in and do more work to understand the business. Again, a large part of any sort of conviction on Diamondback Energy will depend on how sustainable these free cash flows can be going forward. Keep in mind that this is not financial advice and that this is mixed here on metric number six. Even so, this is just one of our six data points that we've looked at so far, and this analysis is meant to be taken in holistically. While these metrics are simple, when they're combined together, they can be very powerful, and we're not done looking at the business quite yet. Then here as a bonus, we're taking a look at Diamondback Energy's dividend profile. Again, Diamondback Energy is currently paying out a 6.2% dividend yield which is well above that of the yield of an S&P 500 ETF. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends, so it's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business like we've been doing, and it's important to understand whether that company's abilities to support their dividends are well supported by their free cash flows in the case of Diamondback Energy. So while the company has paid out dividends since 2018, they've only been able to support these dividends since 2021 using their free cash flows which is likely a rather questionable capital allocation decision. So while it is nice that the business has supported their free cash flows by quite a bit in 2021 and over their last 12 months as well, as their free cash flows have really increased over this period, this may be a reason to have questions about the capital allocation of the business. Over their last 12 months, the business again has produced more than $18 worth of free cash flow and they paid out just under $9 worth of dividends. So they have about a 50% dividend payout ratio. However, because of the mixed nature of some of their dividend payouts in the past, it looks like what the business is planning to do in terms of its dividend payout is going to be up in the air. And to really understand this and to understand if it's sustainable going forward, you would want to understand whether or not one, you can trust in the competence and integrity of management, and then two, understand what their plans are in terms of capital allocation going forward. Then everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Diamondback Energy, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for the business. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with an average of their free cash flows over the last three years, and we're using assumptions for how the business is going to be able to grow these free cash flows out into the future. So it's up to you to do your own homework here to understand whether or not these growth assumptions are going to be potentially accurate and applicable to give us a baseline projected estimate to give us a baseline projected estimate for Diamondback Energy's average free cash flows over the next 20 years. So using a growth stage over the next 10 years where they grow their average free cash flows at a rate of 5% annually, and then using a terminal stage for the business where in the 10 years out after that, so projecting 20 years into the future in total, where they're able to grow their average free cash flows at a rate of 4% annually. If we add in their tangible book value today and we were seeking a potential 10% rate of return for the business, then it looks like right now a fair value for the company would be around $195 per share. So it does look like based off of these assumptions that there would be a potential margin of safety in the company's stock price. However, there are some caveats to keep in mind to this. One is that this 10% rate of return would be including their dividend yield. So again, 6.2% of this would be coming from their dividends paid to shareholders right now. Additionally, there are reasons why this might not be potentially accurate for the business going forward. Again, based off some of the assumptions that we used here, and then two, given the fact that this business is a commodity producer and the oil and natural gas business has been cyclical with swings in the pricing of these commodities and different periods of either low or high capex into the business. So these free cash flows may be less predictable than some other types of companies into the future. Again, using these same growth assumptions and with those same caveats, it looks like you could reasonably expect about an 18% rate of return from Diamondback Energy today, dividends and all. Please be mindful that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. So in just a minute, we'll talk about a summary for Diamondback Energy, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business, especially those around the key points for a potential long or potential short thesis of Diamondback Energy? Starting with some of the key points around a potential long thesis for the business. Number one, Diamondback has been an early adopter of return enhancing technology in the field and is expected to remain at the leading edge. 
Number two, the firm generates substantial free cash flow under a wide range of commodity scenarios and has pledged to return at least half of that to shareholders. And number three, Diamondback is one of the lowest cost oil producers operating in the United States. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis to the company, number one, consumers could sour on fossil fuels faster than expected, eroding long-term demand for crude oil. Number two, production growth could outpace takeaway capacity additions in the Permian Basin, creating periodic bottlenecks and volatile basis differentials. And number three, well productivity could decline when the best acreage is exhausted, pushing up break-evens over time. So hopefully that offers a potentially balanced perspective around some of the key qualitative aspects of the business. Now it's time for our wrap-up. In summary, Diamondback Energy has one of the coolest ticker symbols out there. The business also goes three for six today on our select six analysis. They're earning just about average returns on capital, although those are at nearly 28% over their past 12 months. Their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows are up huge over their last five years, although they have diluted existing shareholders by about 82% over this time. While they did take on debt while the business was cash flow negative, over their last 12 months, they're producing more than $3.2 billion worth of free cash flow, and they'd be able to pay off all of their net debt with only two years worth of free cash flows. Then because they've been a consumer of free cash flow over their last five fiscal years, the business has a negative average free cash flow yield, but their free cash flows have been rapidly increasing as the price of oil and natural gas has increased since the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns. Right now, they have just under a 10% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield, so it does look like that's potentially offering an attractive risk premium in comparison to the yield of the 10-year treasury, and that this business would be interesting to dig in and learn more about. Their dividend payouts over this period have been a mixed bag in terms of being supported by their free cash flows or not. It is good that the business has now brought in enough free cash flow over the last couple of years to comfortably support their dividend payouts, and that management has said that they're going to return 50% of their free cash flows to shareholders. Although given some of the questionable allocation decisions when they were paying out dividends with such negative free cash flows, it's likely worthwhile to dig in and really understand their capital allocation in more detail. Then finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Diamondback Energy. If you've done the work and you believe those growth assumptions, then it looks like from today's valuations, you could reasonably expect about an 18% rate of return for Diamondback Energy, including their dividend yield, and that if you were seeking a potential 10% rate of return for the business, a fair price for the company would be about $195 per share. Again, there are reasons why that might not pan out. One is that the oil and natural gas industry is cyclical in nature, although it does seem that Diamondback Energy has a pretty solid position as a potential low-cost producer and may have that low-cost producer advantage in their oil production. However, it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Diamondback Energy. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can take your reading experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 119 bucks. That's just 33 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but if you use my link, it's 50% off. So check it out if you're interested. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct this research as if you're going to own 100% of a business and you can truly understand the underlying essence of the company and understand what's important and what's not important for the business going forward. So through this deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of Diamondback Energy, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for Diamondback Energy would be. 
So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Diamondback Energy Inc, ticker symbol F-A-N-G, FANG. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Diamondback Energy with me, and have a great day.